if you are someone who is a visual learner and a hands-on learner, I'm going to say that writing is the best thing for you. So for those of us who are perfectionists and we are overachievers and we're scholastic, we like A's, just know that, you know, you may or may not end up with an A. You may end up with a B. Hello and welcome back to a, another pre-nursing recap. This is part two of my second semester. Part one I've already done if you want to go and watch that one before watching this one. But anyway, glad you're here. My name is Monique and I am a pre-nursing student over the age of 30 years old. So if that interests you, continue watching. All right, so we're going to basically recap what happened. I actually finished my semester. My grades were submitted. My GPA was submitted. So let's go ahead and get into the semester. So I'm going to take things. Um, I'm going to take things section by section. I have some tea here as well because that's what I was drinking. <laughs> I'm actually recording this um, after daytime, right? Okay, so Anyway, um, I have basically three different sections and we're gonna start with uh, the classes. So the classes that I took for pre-nursing in my uh, second semester as a part-time student were communications and anatomy and physiology one, okay? So that's that. Now the second section is going to talk about all the stuff you wanna hear about. <laughs> and that is going to be the pros and cons and the difficulty of these classes. We'll start first with communications. Now communications to me was enjoyable. I really did like it. I am someone who loves to talk, but the funny thing about it is in being in that class, I realized that I do love to talk, but I had to work probably three times harder to listen and to understand and comprehend. While I do enjoy listening to people, I think sometimes that is selective, selective hearing, right? And so I think was really good as a self-evaluation, even for me to say, hey, you know, I could really improve upon the way that I communicate with people. And basically, you know, one of the things that we talked about a lot was all these different names of things that we naturally do, but communications class will put a name to it. So let's say for instance, you know, you find yourself thinking about what you're going to say while someone else is speaking versus actually just listening to them speak, right? And so what would be the way to deal with that? Is that really the best way to listen? Or why not just listen? with an open mind, <laughs> you know, why not just listen without having what you're going to say, you know, uh, perfectly thought out by the time they finish talking. And so it was cool for me because it kind of helped me to evaluate like my friends and stuff, because some of my friends, they do, uh, they do talk like that. Like, I feel like they do wait to answer questions. I feel like I'm so fast at answering questions. Like I'm so fast. And I said, you know, I'm definitely gonna work on that. That's one thing I will take away is not to be so quick to answer back or think about what I'm gonna say. Because that really, to me, that signifies that I think what I'm gonna say is gonna be more important than what they say, right? And so I actually practiced that, you know, while I was in the class, um, just in my everyday friendly conversations. And it was really nice. I mean, to really, like relax my mind and say, hey, I don't have to think of what I'm gonna say back. I don't have to be clever. I don't have to be witty I can just listen and then whatever you know comes out of that is what comes out of that but I can simply just take in what someone is saying to me without thinking while they're talking so maybe that can help you too if you find yourself being someone like me who's a talker but maybe not you know so uh inclined to really quietly listen that's it quietly listen so shout out to all the people who already do that. Good for you, right? The other part of this class I really enjoyed as far as a pro was the fact that we learned about interpersonal relationships. And I really enjoyed this one chapter that we did without you know saying too much about the class. Um, I really enjoyed learning about these interpersonal relationships. I can't even say the word interpersonal because I talk so fast <laughs> relationships and basically the concept of coming together and then growing apart and I actually have it here too so the coming together and the coming apart and the different stages like the stair steps that show that a, that a relationship is actually getting you know more and more um deep like you're getting closer to an individual as you're making these strides towards that person right but then at the same time after some time passes and you've been in a relationship then you can have this coming apart and that looks like you know basically um stagnating avoiding terminating um basically just almost like 
secluding yourself, right? And so I thought it was really good to learn about this because in any relationship that you have, you obviously want it to grow and to flourish even when it's been around for a long time. And so I thought it was really good to kind of reflect back on relationship that you're in and just make sure you're always taking those stair steps to the coming together because it's very easy to come together at the beginning of a relationship. But then as a relationship grows, um, you know, longer and stronger, sometimes you can forget some of these things that you did to come together. Together. So I think that was really good, just being cognitive of that as well. Some of these things I already know from having a really good understanding of like Bible teachings and Bible knowledge. Um, so it really coincided with what I knew, right? Um, but it's really nice to also uh, have it from this perspective as well. And so I mended the two together, definitely for my assignments and stuff like that. When it's time for me to write, I definitely use what I already knew as far as wisdom, you know, like specifically from the book of Proverbs <laughs> that I already knew, I've already learned um, within my life. And then, you know, applying this to school assignments as well. So I like mixing uh, the two to uh, really think about my assignments and really, you know, flesh them out to be really uh, good papers and really good writing assignments, essentially. So that was the pro. Now, there were cons, okay? There were cons. The biggest con to this class for me is that I actually took this class online. And while it was cool to take it online, because I could really kind of almost go my own pace, kind of, sort of. Um, one thing about it is that at the very beginning of the semester, we were informed that we will be giving speeches and they will be probably the biggest parts of our grade. However, these speeches will not be on Zoom. They will be in person. And so as you can imagine, if you're taking this class online and now you have to scurry and hurry up and find people who would agree to listen to you because you have to have an audience. That's the whole point of the speeches. So that was really um, a piece of anxiety for that class for me because although I did have a group of people to work with um, and we did support one another, you really never know if they're going to show up until they show up. <laughs> And so I was just so thankful and so grateful that we all worked together. We made it happen. At the end of the semester, we all came together in person to give our speeches and, you know, pass essentially the class, right? So that's really cool. Um, I personally got good grades. I came out of that class with an A plus. So that was really cool. Happy about that. And yeah, that's that on that. So those are the pros and cons of communications and your school may call it something different. I'm not really calling it exactly what it is at my school, but, um, you know, it's basically a speech class at the end of the day. But, you know, if you have something like that, I think it's good to have on your school resume, especially if you're going to be in pre-nursing, you're going to be a registered nurse because you will be speaking to people all the time and you never know where you want to be in the field of nursing. You may not want to be at bedside. You may actually want to be in education. You may want to be in research and some of these things may require that you speak to an audience. And so it was good. I mean, I feel like it was really good practice for that. And I do speak here on YouTube, but you are not sitting in front of me as a people, right? This is, this is only my camera. This is not the same thing as uh, speaking to people in front of you. Again, with me I already had kind of a heads up with that because I do that pretty much, <laughs> you know, monthly when it comes to some of my, um, the way that we worship and within my religion is that we actually do, uh, do a lot of training, uh, theocratic training that does require us to, um, speak in front of a crowd. And so that was something that was really natural to me in a way, but then this again, a little bit different of a perspective because I am the only one within my assignments with for worship it's a little bit different and so anyway it, it like I said it all kind of complemented one another and so that was definitely um, something that did make me nervous about the class the entire semester until it was over I literally felt like if my I don't know I feel like you know it's like a pimple and then the pimple burst <laughs> and so I felt like that's what it was like major relief um at the end of both speeches so yeah now moving on to anatomy and physiology one this is by far the most exciting this class right here was something that I really enjoyed it was really my first like nursing class because up until this point I have been taking um some uh, electives and then I took math uh my first semester and that was cool but this is like the science we're getting into the science like your basic knowledge of the human body 
the structure and the function, the anatomy and the physiology. It was really exciting. Okay, so pros. Pros were I had a really good professor who happened to truly enjoy their job. They also enjoyed their lectures and they enjoyed the information. They were kind enough to make uh, different slides for us, PowerPoints, if you will. And those really helped us to prepare for our lecture exams. Um, because of that, I did not have a anatomy and physiology book. I didn't have to purchase a book at all. These were all digital materials. And I did take this class online as well. Um, but I'll tell you about a con about that too. So with anatomy and physiology, um, I already have a little bit of knowledge about the human body from my own natural curiosity over the years of health information. I just love it anyway. So it was really cool to really get down to you know, the atom of it all up into the organism, all right? Get into the bones, the muscles, the nervous systems <laughs> and different things like that. It was really enjoyable. I really took my time learning and I took my time to really understand the concepts of some subject matters that I would like to work in later on as a nurse. So like, for instance, I already have some experience with orthopedics. I worked as a patient care technician on the orthopedic floor. And so I really enjoyed that particular uh, category of learning because I've already seen this in real life. I've seen the clinical manifestation of basically having osteoporosis or osteopenia and different things like that. So it's really cool to go backwards, like to see it and then to learn it. And that is something that I really enjoyed. Um, that, you know, as far as pros, again, again, that to me, that's the pro. The pro is just learning about the human body. I will say too, that this particular Particular professor that I had made sure that we had a chemistry uh, foundation before we actually started biology. So basically, even though it was one class, they really made sure to give us a, a really good understanding of the atoms and uh, the electrons and the protons and understanding um, ions, uh, you know, ionic uh, properties and um, whether things were fat soluble or water soluble, really understanding carbohydrates, really understanding um, fats and proteins and really going into detail with metabolism and different things like that. Because when you learn that stuff on a minute level, I feel like it's something that really helps you. And it did. It truly did. Having that chemistry background truly did help in the bigger things of biology because there are so many different um functions that are happening when you get to the bigger body parts that make a lot more sense because you understand what's happening on that cellular level. So a prime example of that would be learning about the muscles and how we move, you know, how we're moving and not, not dancing. <laughs> But, you know, when we're at the gym and doing like this and stuff like that, that is a whole process. Like it's a whole party going on when you are at the gym inside your body. It's a whole party, right? Um, as far as how those muscles are triggering potassium and calcium and sodium and how that's all working together, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, you know, just really learning how all this stuff is coming together for the good of you, the good of your body, the good of your life. And one thing I can definitely say about this class, after... Uh, learning about uh, muscles and bones um, and the nervous system, <laughs> I was like, oh, let me go to the gym for the good of my bones and my muscles, okay? Because now I know exactly what's going on when I work out. And I did, you know, kept it up for a little while. And I, I still want to because I definitely understand the whole situation now. And again, I've done the gym before, but it's just more fun to do it when you understand what's truly happening um, at the cellular level while you're, exer while you're exercising. So that was really fun. Um, so yeah, now let's talk about the level of difficulty. Very difficult. Not difficult because the information is hard to understand. You will understand the information. Difficult because you will have a ton of it, a ton. You can imagine 350 sheets of paper in a binder, like organized beautifully, that's it. Um, when you first get your binder, you'll be thinking, oh, I wanna fill this binder up. Don't worry, you will, you will. That binder will get thick, don't worry. You, you will have a library by the time it's all over with. <laughs> So yeah, I really enjoyed taking notes. Um, I will say that one of the cons is starting this class is that because I've been out of school for a while and it, all this is just new to me, it did take me a minute to really catch on to how to properly study and how to properly take notes. I did get a hold of it um, at the middle of the semester, but I feel like had I known 
it before that I probably would have made better grades in my lecture exams. But I'll be honest, guys, the lecture exams were exhausting. I mean, it humbled me. It, it humbled me. I thought I was going to fly through those exams. Like, yeah, I know that. Mm -mm. When you have 17 pages of information front and back, yeah, you're going to be real happy that you passed. If you pass. So I'm happy to say that I passed everything. I did not fail not one thing in that class. I passed it all. Did I pass it all with an A? Absolutely not. <laughs> but I did pass. Um, so that was definitely a plus. Like I said, it will humble you. So for those of us who are perfectionists and we are overachievers and we're scholastic and we like A's, just know that, you know, you may or may not end up with an A. You may end up with a B. Just I'm just letting you know. And that's okay. So do not beat yourself up about it because honestly, the fact that you even pass is good. Um, those literature exams are highly difficult, especially if you have a difficult professor. So I can say that my professor, in my opinion, was someone who, it was a challenging course, but they did everything that they could to help you pass. I didn't need any, well, I'll take that back. Towards the end, I sought out extra things, but they were free. So I sought out extra videos on YouTube to help me remember the nervous system. Um, also, different things about the bones when I had to, when I had to identify the bones and the muscles. If you're wondering how that looks too on the online class, it's very interesting. When you take exams, one of the cons is that you do have to be on a lockdown, and so basically what that means is you know you're on camera, they can hear you and see you, and so just keep keep that in mind be aware of that your school may be different i'm just telling you my experience and so that's something that was um you know a little different but it was good too because you you know what you know and you there, there's no cheating no cheating so you know what you know if you don't know it you don't know it and that's how i approached every exam i know what i know if i don't know it i don't know it you know and so that was how I approached the exams and that's how I passed my exams. Also passed by studying. <laughs> and yes, the harder you study, the greater the grade you will get. But towards the end, I pretty much knew what kind of grade I was gonna get. And, and I'll be honest, I just, you know, I got a little bit comfortable and I just really focused on the things I wanted to learn and just made sure I had enough information to pass. And so just being completely honest there. But um, yeah, so that's that. So yeah, like the cons of that, like I said, it's just a lot of content, a lot of content. And also just the weekly testing. We had tests every week. So it was really my first introduction to what nursing school, like the core classes would truly be like. If you ask me, I honestly think that if you make it through microbiology, anatomy and physiology one and two, I've actually heard that nursing school is not as hard. I don't know. If, you already, if you've already been through nursing school or you're currently in it, let me know your thoughts on that. I'm curious very curious but um yeah so that's that now the third thing that i want to talk about too is going to be the grades and the grade point average so as i already told you in communications i made an a plus but in anatomy and physiology i made a b plus okay uh that was disappointing at first i wanted an a because i had a 4.0 going into the semester I did not get to keep my 4.0. I am at a 3.7 and I am perfectly okay with that. Um, I was a little bit, like I said, disappointed at first, but like I said, that class will humble you. And the fact that I made the grades that I made, um, I'm very grateful, very grateful. So I turned that frown upside down and I'm happy with my 3.7. I'm happy with my B plus, okay? And that is B plus, I put it on the screen, okay? <laughs> I'll tell you this. My way of studying is to write it down. I can definitely tell y'all when I wrote out charts like different flow charts and just made different concept maps, those things help me the most. So if you're having trouble in anatomy and physiology, I truly encourage you to really get a hold on the way that you are studying. If you want me to do a video on that specifically, I will. Um, I just need to get enough views here and enough comments here to actually ask for it because I did uh, really hone in on how I took notes and I'm gonna take notes the same way within my next anatomy and physiology class because I have one coming up in the fourth semester. So um, yeah, so I'll do that gladly in a different video. But anyway, learn how to take notes. And if you are someone who is a visual learner and a hands-on learner, I'm gonna say that writing is the best thing for you. Uh, and honestly, I've expressed this in the last pre-nursing recap as well, but while I do love my iPad, my iPad is not the way that I learn. <laughs> um, I do love good notes, but good notes is not the way that I learn. So all those pretty electronic notes, I don't learn like that. 
So I had to stop doing that. It was holding me back. It was wasting my time. And I was not retaining information in the best way possible. Once I started writing, I started learning. I started retaining information. I started memorizing. And the things were glued to my brain. So I'm just going to give you that tip. Try writing. Try writing it out. Okay. So again, if you're interested in how I did that, leave me a comment. You know, let me know. And I'll definitely do that. So I hope you guys are having a good semester thus far. I'm in my third semester at the moment. So I'll recap that at the end. And I enjoy talking to you guys. It's actually like, you know, talk therapy for me. <laughs> because it has helps me to recap my own semester in my head. So yeah, anyway, thanks for listening. And I will talk to you guys on a, on a different pre-nursing video. Until then, I hope you guys have a peaceful and productive rest of your day. And yeah. I'll talk to you on the next upload.